Okay, for this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to find the maximum of a quadratic function. And I know that this is going to be a maximum because of the fact that there is a negative in front of x squared, which tells me that my parabola opens upside down. So um, anytime your graph opens upside down, then you would have a maximum value at this point. Um, this could be referred to as a local maximum for the interval, or you could also say it's the absolute maximum because it is the highest point on the graph. So what we're going to do is we are going to take this equation, the negative x squared plus 6x minus 2, and plug it into our calculator. So let me grab my calculator. To enter your information in, you always hit the y equals. And on your y equals screen, you do want to make sure that you don't have anything in here because if you get a domain error, that means you probably entered something into this menu or into this screen wrong. Or um, you may have uh, your stat plots turned on because you're doing something in a stats class. So if any of these plots are highlighted, you may want to turn them off. And I basically just hit enter. Um, while I'm highlighted on there. So make sure that none of those are turned on. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to enter in our equation. It was negative x, and for x we always use this button here, the x comma t comma theta comma n button. We can hit the squared button, plus 6, and again we use the x, minus 2. And now when I hit graph on this, we'll look to see if the screen needs to be adjusted. Um, but with this one, because we can see the highest point, we don't need to adjust the window. If it, you couldn't see the highest point, you would adjust the window. The window gives you your x min stands for the lowest x value that you have. x max is the highest. x scale is what is it counting by on the x axis. The y min um, is your lowest point. y max is your highest point that is available to be seen, and your y scale is what you're counting by. This stuff down here, don't worry about. Um, so I'm going to go back to my graph, and when I get my graph, I can see the highest point here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit second and trace. Above it, it says calculate. You can see here, these are all the things that you can calculate. Um, because we are looking for the maximum point, we are going to choose option four. And then when you do that, you have a screen that shows up. And the first thing that it's going to ask you for is the left bound. So basically, the left bound is saying, I want something to the left side of my highest point. As long as it's flashing to the left side, you're good. You can hit Enter. And then I want to go to the opposite side because now it says the right side. So as long as it's flashing to the right side of your highest point, you're good. And then just hit enter one more time. And sometimes because of the fact that it's approximating, it may give you a weird decimal like this, 3.000026. Um, it really is the maximum is at 37. Um, and it's just because of rounding errors with the technology. Sometimes it has to approximate. Um, so this could be slightly different in your calculator. Your calculator may just say 37. Um, so with this, what we would say is that there is a max, and I don't know why, I'm ahead of myself, max at 7 when x equals 3. Okay, um, just to verify that that was correct, remember to do hand calculations. The x coordinate is always negative b over 2a. And so if you plug this in right here, we would have negative 6 over 2 times negative 1. And we can see that if I divide this out, it gives me 3. So that just verifies that my x equals 3 is correct. And then remember to find the highest point, we just find f of 3. So that would give me negative 3 squared plus 6 times 3 minus 2. So you have to be careful here with this. Remember that you are not squaring the negative. So this would be negative 9 plus 18, which is 9, 9 minus 2 is 7. So this just shows you that you could have also done hand calculations to get this that are very simple, or you can plug it into your calculator. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or additional topics that you need me to cover, please let me know. Also, if you liked this video, if you would please consider subscribing, I would appreciate it.